Hey guys, Doug Childs here. Oh man, look what time it is. It's Warriors and Wild Men time. Rich, how you doing, man? Doug Childs, coolest guy I ever knew my whole entire life. What's happening, Warriors and Wild Men? It's true. You speak the truth. <laughs> I perceive and, that uh, you are a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I perceive on many other weird things. Hey, uh, w good to see your uh, uh, scraggly face, man. Uh, you got a, a beard growing, and um, it's not our topic today, but we, we've got to dust up over this crap that we saw. Uh, you posted on your personal Facebook page that there's uh, some nimwits, some, <laughs> some... Superintendent some of some super denomination, you know? Glory to God. So, so you know are, he's smart. Just ask So him. these are two followers of Jesus, and um, hmm. I believe Jesus had a beard. I know he does what? in all the. I know he does in all the paintings, Rich. And um, not only mm. that, but did you know Jesus looks like Ted Nugent from 1977? He does. And and here's an interesting thing. I'm pretty sure Jesus has a beard because the New Testament starts talking about they pulled his beard out to the point that he was bleeding. Uh, that well, that go. would imply so, at least that he had a beard. I mean, it didn't say he had a beard. It just said that they pulled it out and it was bleeding. So I'm. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and call that a beard. Oh, so, so you're referring to biblical evidence instead of uh, uh, your, your church's denomination's tradition. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, so you put up this, uh, this, this post on Facebook, yep. and, uh, and there are two ministers that are talking about whether having a beard These are is head honchos of a denomination. They're not just run-of-the-mill guys. These are like, you know, top-of-the-hierarchy kind of guys. So they're, they're the potentates. So, yeah. um, so they're saying that having a beard is sinful. Is it? it well, let's. Put I couldn't it, get through it all, man, because I had to let, let me get ready for the for show. But help me, help it, me. It, basically, he said there were people in the Bible who had beards. Moses, good. There were people in the Bible like Joseph who didn't have a beard, also good. And he said, so the Bible doesn't say either way. And I was like, well, really? Good, then good. shut the front door, then. Yeah, that Doug. Literally, I was like. <laughs> Good point. Well done. And then he says, but. However. Yeah. And that's when you get in trouble, Doug. That's when you get in trouble. I had a person right. message me on, on Facebook and they asked me. All of a sudden my brain went blank. They asked you something about the beard? Nope. Hey, man, you having uh, Prevagen moments? Yeah, take man. Take some take some jellyfish oil, well, I, man. It'll have, help your brain <laughs> kick into gear. Hold on. I need some more coffee. I am 49, so, you know. <laughs> Wait till you get 55, man. It gets all, you're walking around. You don't know what day it is. You got your shirt on backwards. Your pants are z zippers on the butt side. And, and you're like drooling. And you think it's, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. And it happens to be uh, lunch. It yeah. It gets worse. Well, the, the funny thing is they're just asking me a question, basic Bible question. And I tell them the Bible says this and the Bible says that. Oh, this is what it was. I just remembered. They said, what about when the Bible seems to contradict itself. And I said, well, the Bible says that we are slaves of God. And then it says that we're no longer slaves, we're sons. So which one's true? I said, both. They're different right. facets of a multifaceted diamond. The facets and the cuts of the diamond and the angles, the same light gets reflected. It's brilliant, it's beautiful. And, and you can't say, we're no longer slaves, because scripture clearly says that. And you can't say, well, we're only slaves and we're not sons. Because look, those are, those are two different facets of, of truth about our relationship to God and to each other. It's very simple. And, and then I, this, is, this is the beauty of it. This is the greatest part of it, which I, I learned from someone else along the way. I don't remember who it was or I'd give him credit. But I learned this. If there's a contradiction in the Bible, the problem isn't with God. The problem's with your understanding. Here's, here's what I like to tell, um, you know, everybody's, all the smarmy hipsters and stuff that go to university and things are like, you know, I used to be a Christian, but once I went to Tallahassee Junior College and my sociology, <laughs> my sociology professor, you know, told me about there's so many contradictions in the Bible. It's like, hmm, so many? You mean like a hundred? Probably. Let's say, let's say, let's, uh, let's say there's 25. Yeah, easy. Okay, um, just for the record, say that there's ten. How about five, three? Give me one. Show me one contradiction uh, when you take the, the Bible 
in its entirety That's as right. a piece of literature show me one where it is in direct contextual conflict with another part of the scripture and i will kiss your doubting thomas backside <laughs> come on somebody they don't want to hear that because it's <clears throat> no, a fun it's... thing to repeat but they don't of know what course. they're talking about it's a good excuse so that you could go boink your girlfriend or your You're gay. boyfriend that's right so here's the deal <laughs> You, you, you see this guy's on there. They're talking about it. Well, you know, we have positive examples of people with beards and without beards. But this is what he says. But in the 60s and 70s, the, the hippies start. I, Doug, I swear that's what he's saying. The damn they hippies. started growing out their hair and their beards as a Do sign tell. of rebellion against their parents and against God. It. And he goes, and they were using drugs and they were promiscuous. Smoking and he said, the devil's lettuce, Orion's so, oregano. And listen what he says. Uglies. So when they came to the church, man, I'm about to give this dude a sociology Ooh, lesson. Come on, when they bro. When they came to the church looking like that and they were converted, mm -hmm. on their own, they cut their hair and shaved their beards and changed the way they dressed without even Ooh. being asked. And, and I thought, you mean the culture of your squared away, douchebag, super ultra religious lame church everybody dresses the same and looks exactly the freaking same and a dude who came in looking for help changed the way he looked to look like the freaking rest of you to be accepted i think i learned that in intro to sociology in the first day that is not conviction dummy it's conformity and that's just, your problem he just you guys joined are, another cult you guys are all they're all con look the bible says in, in romans chapter 12 Verse two, it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world or to the image of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that, and people will preach on that. It's not talking about the way you look, man. It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Another verse says, by changing the way you think. It's not talking about by changing the way you dress. Now look, if you're wearing a, a mini skirt that it's so short, we can see your liver. All right, the Bible says be modest, you know what I mean? Probably get a longer skirt, you know, and, and, and reel some of that cleavage in. And for the guys who can't pull their freaking pants up, not only is it not acceptable in church, but it also won't help you get a job. There's some wisdom for you. But I'll tell you what, you're not going to go to hell because your butt crack's hanging out, you know, unless it's an advertisement. But the reality is, is these guys are acting like these people got convicted by the Holy Spirit to shave their beards. Now I have a beard, Doug, you know, I've only had a beard for six months. I, I could care less, do not care. Don't care. But when you start adding your wisdom to the Bible, I ain't got time for that stuff, man. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, that, that video of the, uh, the, the sin of the beard um, makes me wanna grow like an Osama bin Laden-like beard and rock up to their conference. But um, it's, it's reminiscent of a, a time that I was at this pastor's conference, man. And uh, uh, we've talked about it before, all senior pastors, and um, uh, we're sitting down to supper. They're ordering drinks. The waitress comes around. She goes, what do you want? And he goes, sweet tea, tea, Coke, tea, tea, sweet tea, tea, Coke, Coke, tea, Diet sweet tea. Sprite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Diet <laughs> Mountain Dew. You know, I want a Dr. Pepper. Huh, that's healthy. That's better than beer. It's only got 12 tablespoons full of sugar. Yeah. So I, so I order a Coors Light, and uh, this one, one dude goes apoplectic. How dare you? You are not uh, showing a good testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the one who made uh, 150 gallons of wine at a wedding feast? At the end of the party. <laughs> when everybody else is sloshed. No, so, um, so anyway, fast forward uh, about a year. Um, he was caught boinking Rhonda, his uh, church secretary, hey. in the broom in the broom closet. Hey. So, but he wasn't drinking a beer, and he didn't have a beard either. He was sober when he did it. Clean. No shaven. beard, no beard, no beer, man. Probably had hey, a tie on. Hey, listen, all the bearded dudes, um, you're not sinning against Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> I personally don't give a rat's backside if you have facial hair or not. Uh, it's heart issues. It's not outward appearances. And um, yeah, other than, you know, walking around with your ass hanging out of your pants or your zipper undone, or if you smell like, you know, some French guy who hadn't bathed in a fortnight, uh, I don't care what you look like, you know? Well, if you want to, if you want to, uh, if you want gainful employment, 
And if you want to succeed in life, I seriously suggest shaping up uh, your physical appearance. But other than that, it, it has crap all to do with whether you're accepted in the beloved. See, and that guy, but that, <clears throat> this is what he does, Doug. You know, you know, they say that the devil's a great theo theologian. He's the greatest and he's still a devil. <laughs> the reality is this, the guy, and, and what does the devil do? People think everything the devil says is a lie. No, it's not. When the devil was talking to Jesus, he said a whole lot of truth. When he was talking to Eve, he also said a whole lot of truth. And Out he of usually, context. He slips a little lie in with a whole bunch of truth. You know what I mean? He, he'll give you a hundred truths to get you to swallow a lie. He didn't have an issue with that. So this guy, the most dangerous thing is something that looks like orthodox theology and then you slide in some religion. Next thing you know, you're ensnared. And that's what, when you read the New Testament, they're like, guys, got to get off the legalism, got to get off the legalism. But it doesn't take away from holiness. That's, that's, see, you know why it's so, man, I'm going, my mind's going a million miles an hour now. I couldn't get it jump started earlier. But, but the reason that, that people, it's so hard to help somebody get set free from legalism is because they link their legalism to their holiness. And, and that's missing the whole reason that Jesus came. I think I've read a couple books in the Bible on, Doug? You read any books in the Bible on that about no. legalism just doesn't <laughs> help at all? So I believe, uh, I believe uh, um, the legalist in, uh, <clears throat> in Jesus' day who fasted one week out of every month, who memorized the first five books, the Pentateuch uh, of the Bible, and uh, who paid a, who tithed off everything? I'm talking down to their spices. Yep. Uh, who read the prophets every Sabbath, man? Uh, <laughs> they didn't recognize Jesus, and they ended up murdering the Son of God. So, hello. Yeah. Your and, rules can can make you jacked up. Hey, and where then you don't even Jesus, recognize Christ. What Jesus even called them out on is they figured out a technically legal way to keep all their stuff and not take care of their parents. They literally added all of these laws and codes to the Ten Commandments and violated one of the main... I mean, God right. gave us ten things. Come on. And then even in those... Jesus reduced it. Love your neighbor, love God, love your neighbor, right? If you don't love your parents, these guys found a religious, legal way to not take care of their parents. And then they're the ones that are the strictest... Come on, man. And then you got this guy up there and he says this. He says, well, you know, what is the beard saying? You know, it's not the beard per se. Well, he says facial hair. But what's the intent of the heart for the beard? What is the message when you're leading worship? What message are you speaking from the platform? I said, I know what message you're speaking from the platform. Heresy. You're speaking heresy. You're a yeah. heretic. They're, no they're pun e intended. They're, you know, yeah, H -A -R -R -A -R. You're a uh, tick. They're equaling... <clears throat> their laws and their religion to the word of right. God. And that, that's where the Pharisees yeah. went wrong. They missed it. They missed the day of their visitation, Doug. And that's a yeah. little important. Yeah, and God uh, uh, said that he bent their backs forever and he blinded them. And uh, it's, it's a miracle somebody caught up in that kind of self-righteous garbage yeah. uh, can ever see the light of day in Christ. Sinners Simple can. Things. The public the publicans yep. can. Uh, hey, you but know, that's, uh, sorry, go ahead. I mean, uh, ragamuffins, they get it. The prostitute gets it. The person that's uh, been bedeviled all of his life and, and loathes himself and understands, you know, in him uh, dwells nothing good. Yeah. When he hears grace and he hears uh, substitutionary sacrifice, um, yeah, he's on it like stink on a monkey. But the other guys, you know, it's... They uh, need it. it. Yeah, they're self-righteous. And, and they want to um, control people. No, and it's, uh, you know, <clears throat> I think... Um, you know, in in the uh, in the political realm with Clash Daily and the stuff that we deal with in culture, you know, there's this uh, maxim that Andrew Breitbart uh, made popular. He said, "Well, he goes, you know what? He said politics is downstream of the church, and uh, that's right. I mean, politics is uh, as the uh, I'm sorry, politics yeah. is downstream of culture, rather. Yeah. And um, you know, whatever's going on in culture." It's, it's going to be it's going to be morphed into policy. Right. Uh, I'd like to add to that though, is that uh, culture is downstream of the church. Yeah. And if we see culture turning uh, into this godless morass, and if we see our politicians morphing into these people who legislate lawlessness and licentiousness, um, then it's basically because the church has lost its uh, savior yeah. and savior. 
And um, we've become ridiculously goofy and wrapped around the axles. And again, a great example is uh, these guys making, you know, a mountain out of a freaking bearded molehill. <laughs> it's like here, here we are talking about, and, and we're dealing with some of the most cataclysmic, uh, powerful issues yeah. nationally, ecclesiastically, globally. And these dipsticks are talking about a damn beard. Whether yeah, well, it's sinful or not, yeah, the, and, and, and 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 here's here's the the thing that gets me. And here these guys will whiz on culture. They'll talk about Hillary and Obama, and it's like, listen, that kind of garbage, that kind of bullcrap that you're focusing on, that minutia, you're straining gnats and you're swallowing camels, yep, is day. the reason the culture and the politicians are getting away with the kind of darkness yep. that they're getting away with because well, we're stupid. Yeah, because the church is losing its voice. And, and the reason it's losing its voice is because it spends time talking about things that matter to no one. So let's, let's get themselves. off. So let's, so let's not Wait, be a part of um, the okay. problem. Before let's, we get let's... off that, though, we have to. Well, I think the issue of that is a, is a bigger issue than them talking about the beard. It's whatever they do with everything else. I do have to read one comment somebody put on, on my post on Facebook, and it's by David Beavers, this young guy. He's a bass player, and uh, he lives in the Philippines, but, but he was bass player for our church for years. Check this out. The, and this is a joke, but this is what he writes about that guy's post. He says, as someone who cannot grow a beard, I'm predisposed to say that beards are tools of Satan to distract us from God's grace. As goats have beards, and so does the idol of Baphomet. There you go. Thus meaning that beards are not only ungodly, but in fact satanic. Now, can That's we get it. to the real issues like whether or not Satan created heavy metal and what distortion pedals I should stay away <laughs> from in case I accidentally blaspheme during worship? Come on, man. That's good stuff yeah. right there. Hey, this read my... Ridiculous. Read my comment on, on that thread. Oh, I didn't see that. Let me... You didn't see my comment on that thread, buddy? No, because I was driving. You said, hey, Zeke, did I not say this right when I came in? I didn't read your comment. I said the same thing. <laughs> Doug, your comment says they're probably both porn addicts. <laughs> hey, I said to Zeke, I said they sit there and talk about beards, but they're addicted right. to porn. Let, let me throw this out there real quick. One they're of the probably addicted denominations... to gay, gay bearded men porn. Probably that's why they're so again. That's why they're so again it. So yeah. check this out. The Jim Baker theory. Thou protesteth too much. He'll probably be caught uh, uh, like Ted Haggard with a with a trainer up in Denver snorting crystal meth off his abs, and the guy's got this monstrous Grizzly Adams like beard. Well, there you so go. So we'll give it a five year test. So so I don't want to name the denomination because I don't. My issue isn't with a denomination. My issue is not with these two guys. My issue is with the church globally that we need to get back to the basics. Everything's about back to the basics. That's every great reformation, every great movement has been an attempt to get back to the Bible, back to the basics. Anyway, so the problem is this. One of the biggest denominations in the United States and the world that when they met for a convention, their hotel porn sales were off the spike. chart. This was the pastors and the ministers, the lead, the top guys. No, it didn't just spike. It was, I can't remember the numbers. I don't want to exaggerate, but it would, I don't think I could even exaggerate it. I remember reading it and it was so far off the charts that they had to like prepare for it because these guys were coming. <laughs> and then what do you think they're talking about in their convention? Beards and these guys with long hair. These hussies hair. walking around in mini skirts shaking their ass. Yeah, and it's like, you know what? Let's make sure all the girls in the church are ugly so all the guys go outside right. the church to find girlfriends. Anyway, I feel, I feel better after having said that. I hope so, man. I feel, I feel cleansed. That's our Warriors and Wild Men. Uh, you're crazy as hell anti-beard religious apostate podcast. Yeah. Can, I, can I throw my title in? That's right. our, Go ahead. you're crazy as hell with your dumb ace doctrine and, and your, your wicked theology that's dressed up in, in beautiful words and a sharp suit, di distracting and misdirecting the church so that we're focused on stupid things instead of things like really loving God and really helping somebody. And I think it's as destructive and demonic as somebody who straight out preaches a, a doctrine that's false and separate from what Christ said. I think it's just as bad. You know, if you can't, you know, like to say, if you can't get the church to fall, just distract the church, do a little dance, do whatever you got to do. And then we're focused on stupid stuff. So that, that's how I feel about that, Doug. Hey, and I would also like to uh, 
uh, say this to the the dudes, the warriors and wild men, and the bearded women who listen to warriors <laughs> and wild men. Yes. Well, I just you, want you to know, bearded women, that is satanic. I'm gonna throw that out there. <clears throat> you are welcome here at our electronic campfire. Come on. You are. <laughs> we don't care what you look like. Uh, you could probably be sitting in your underwear right now, man, pulling lint out of your navel. I don't care. You could have, you know, these wild professorial eyebrows that have eternal life. Who gives a rat's backside? Long hair, bald we're head. We're concerned. <laughs> we're concerned about major issues. Yep. We're concerned about, uh, uh, you know, making this place a better place. Yep. And um, yeah, so we don't care. And uh, welcome, welcome to our world. Welcome to the world of warriors and wild men. Hey, follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, I swear we've been talking about this website. It is coming soon. You're going to dig it. It's coming. Uh, Rich, say goodbye. Warriors and Wild Men, Audi like your belly button. <laughs>